Mr. Chairman, thank you very much uh, for holding this hearing. Mr. Chairman, I've said it before, and I will say it again, health care is a right. Health care <laughs> is a... Excuse me, with the gentleman uh, postpone his comments for a second. Everybody needs to be heard here. So let's proceed on that basis. Let me recognize the gentleman from Georgia. Health care is a fundamental human right that this country has yet to realize. As long as I live, I will fight with every ounce of strength, every breath in my body to make this right a reality. There's not a person in this country whose family has not known illness or injury. For too long, they have struggled. They are fed up, tired of a health care system that is not right, not just, and not fair. Access to care should not depend on the size of your wallet or the dig digit in your zip code. We must do more. We must do better, and we can, and we will. In 1865, the 13th Amendment freed our ancestor from slavery. Almost 100 years later, those of us who took part in the Civil Rights Movement were still marching in the street, still fighting for equal rights. We have come a long way, but we still have much work ahead. Mr. Chairman and members of the Ways and Means Committee, we play a special role. We need to stand up, fight for those who are not as healthy and not as wealthy. We need to speak up for those who feel left out and left behind. We must ask ourselves, what would these bills look like in 100 years? Does this move our cause far enough down that long road to justice. Answering this question correctly is our most sacred duty. Mr. Chairman, answer unanimous consent to submit a letter from the NAACP on this matter. So ordered. Dr. Berkeley, thank you for your testimony. And thank each and every one of you for testifying. Thank you, Ms. Wood, for bringing your daughter to bear witness. But Dr. Berkman, what is your top recommendation to address disparities in minority and rural health? Well, first, uh, Congressman Lewis, as always, it's an honor to be in the same room as you, and thank you for your service to this nation. Um, what makes us sick in this country and selectively affects people of color and people low income are social determinants of health. It's the, it's, the, it's the nature of our communities. Right now, healthcare is a repair shop. We, take, we wait for people to get sick and, and, um, and then they come into the system. Now we have to have an absolute commitment to equity and justice in that system and we are not equitable. There are things we need to do to make sure that no matter what your income or your race is, you can have access to the same quality care. But unless we as a nation begin to invest upstream on the social determinants, housing and transportation and the environment and violence in our streets and racism and its, and its legacy, we will not be able to be a healthy country for any of us, let alone the disadvantaged among us. And so we need a health care payment system which is sensitive to that and which is capable of distributing, redistributing health care resources toward actual causes. Otherwise, otherwise, we're always dealing with effects. We have this uh, terrible problem in this country now with rising maternal mortality rates, selectively affecting people of color and people of low income. We know what to do. We need, it's empowering the communities in which those people live. It's, it's broadening the supports that pregnant women get, uh, supporting doulas, uh, using the insights of the social determinants of health work and the pathways for community health in Ohio. We know what to do. No payer in this country is going to make those shifts uh, unless it's a publicly accountable payer who knows, who knows where those resources should go. We can do it, but we need, someone's got to have the ball. And that's one of the reasons I favor uh, a consolidated payment system in this country with accountability to the public. Thank you very much.
Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my time. I thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Buchanan.